Hello everyone. Um, what we're going to have a go at today for the new project is um, a flag iris. Uh, so the one that I have um, drawn up, I've again sketched very lightly in 2B pencil, the basic outline. No details, just the basic outline of the petals to a decent size on my paper. I'm going to set this against white paper. I'm not going to put a background behind it, but you can and uh, so you can decide whether it's most sensible to wash a colour behind the iris to start with or paint the iris first and put the background in behind. Um, totally up to you, but I'm going to set mine against white paper because I think it'll look quite dramatic because it's fairly strongly coloured. The other thing I have done in advance for my particular iris is I have painted into position a little bit of masking fluid because I have some areas that I want to retain as white paper or very light patterning. Um, so I've put the masking fluid in place now and it's now dry, completely dry, so that I can wash over the top. The iris that you choose may not need any masking at all. This is purely because I've got some patterning around the sort of the throat or tongue area of the, of the iris. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is colour mixing. This is the colour selection that I've chosen for my uh, iris. Um, I've used a couple of sort of slightly more unusual colours, um, a smalt blue together with permanent rose. Now obviously the colours that you choose will be dependent on the iris that you've decided to paint, but also what you've got in your box. So I've chosen to use smalt blue, but obviously that can be replaced with any blue or any pink that you may have. I've chosen permanent rose because it's a brighter pink and it will give me a slightly lighter uh, mauve tone. I've then got Windsor Blue Red Shade with Quinacridone Magenta. Now that is a bright sort of um, uh, shocking pink but again you might have something else in your box that you could use as an alternative. I've also used Cobalt Blue Deep and Permanent Rose. Any of the Cobalt Blue will give you this granulation which looks rather nice um, and I do want a little bit of that to give some texture to the petal. And then for some of the very deep sort of velvety dark purples I've gone with a very dark blue. Now I've got Indigo in my box. You might also have got something like Payne's Grey which has a lot of blue in it um, and you could use that as an alternative. That will granulate um, and I've used that with permanent rose. And then I've got a very, very light um, mauve, which is Windsor Blue and permanent rose. And the other bit I'm gonna do is, uh, for my center, I need a bright, warm yellow. I'm gonna use gamboge. You could use something like a cadmium yellow. There will be some other colors going into this, but that's my basic palette. Okay, so if you've got your puddles of color ready to go, as usual, we're going to start with the lightest colours first and I'm going to begin with my biggest brush, so my size 12 brush, load it with the palest colours and work wet in wet. So this is the first layer of colour going down. Bearing in mind that if the colour looks a bit strong or I need to lighten it in, in places, I can use uh, water to do that. So I'm going to load the petal with one colour and you might find it easier to work one petal at a time Otherwise, particularly if your room is warm, it's going to dry too quickly. So I've put it down with the biggest petal first and then I can use my smaller, this is a size eight and it's got a really good point to it. And I can work up to the edges of the petal fairly quickly, just pulling the color up and hopefully not going over the top. I've started at the top of the flower especially so that I uh, don't drag my hand through what I'm doing. So if you find it easier to work one petal at a time to give yourself the time to uh, drop colour in wet in wet, then that's the way to go. As long as you've got big enough puddles of colour to match it with the other petals. So I've got quite a complicated shape on the edges here, so I need a good pointed brush come up to the edge. And the quicker, well the warmer the room is, the quicker this will dry. So you do have to load your brush with a decent amount of colour to move it round. So by using this technique you can fill 
quite a complicated area fairly crisply and then I can while that's wet move on to drop some other colours in so I'm coming in with a slightly more mauvey tinge and just doing some sweeps of colour I will get granulating effects on this but I personally want that um, if you don't like that effect then make sure that all the blues and pinks that you use and it's blues mainly that um, are non granulating but I want a little bit of texture on my flower so I'm specifically using blues that will granulate but it's all personal taste again if the colour puddles stop and just mop the colour and then I can go to a slightly different shade I think I'll have a little bit more pinkiness coming through so I'll pick up a bit of my quinacridone magenta if you're going to work wet in wet remember that you have to mix a slightly more powerful bit of colour slightly thicker mix otherwise you'll get cauliflower so hopefully I've got a bit thicker and I just want that stronger pink to come in in the centre but this should all be soft um, at this stage I want all my edges soft so that's why we're doing this wet in wet so that we don't get harsh hard edges at this stage we'll want some of those later on but in the early stages I want everything to be soft so that is my first layer I'm just going to mop up the excess colour at the bottom and that will reform as this starts to dry but that will be the beginnings of my first set of washes on each petal and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that on all of these top petals um, first but I'm going to have to wait for each petal to dry because I want to retain the crisp edge around each one. So patience and get these lightest washes on all of the petals first before you start moving on to the next layer of colour. Now that I've put in the lightest washes in the top petals, before I go any further, because I don't want the deeper purples to bleed into my yellows, now's the time to put the yellows so in my particular iris I've got to put the yellows into position so I'm going to use a nice warm yellow um, and this is gamboge um, and I'm going to begin by putting that into position and that will need to dry completely before I then begin the slightly deeper purples so I'm just I'm going to flick some of the gamboge in where I need to. Bearing in mind that I can always come back and add further into this, uh, I've got a little bit of very pale, so I've taken the gamboge, watered it down with some clean water, and I'm just going to run that across the top of this petal here. Let it overlap the mauve, and it actually turns it this quite nice, sort of almost terracotta colour. I have got a bit of masking at that point so I will be able to retain some absolute white paper. That will need to go a little bit darker later but I can come back and do that again. Um, I've then got some, this whole centre section um, has got a warm colour to it so I'm going to take my gamboge, run it across the whole thing but before it has a chance to dry, drop some other colours into it so I'm just going to take that right the way up and I'll take it all the way up to there. It's not a really thick wash, this is a fairly thin wash of colour. Up to the edge of the petal and around this bit. I'm not going to try and take on too much in any one go because it'll dry before I've had a chance to drop other colours in. So I'm going to take it all the way around here and 
then move to a smaller, this is a size two, and just bring it in here. But before this dries, I want to add a little bit of my pink into that yellow, which will give it a nice sort of orangey tone. And I'm gonna drop a bit of that in on the edge of the petal. It will need to go dark darker later, but that begins to get that slight orange hue to it while it's still wet and wet. And I can come in there and I can let that run all the way through this section, move back to a smaller brush to bring it around here onto this side. I don't want to, I'm trying not to lose the sharp edges on my petals. So that's why I'm working in this way and I'll just fade that off there. I think I started to dry a little bit at the top there, but that's where actually there's some pink coming in. So I could do that right now and bring some pink in. In fact, I'll we'll use magenta. In. Straight away. Just to get a blurry edge. I'll come back and brighten that up later. I can get an edge there. It's soft. And I'll do the same on the other side. to filter that out. come back and work into that section later. I need to let this all dry before I go back into it. I want to retain that shape in the centre so I have to leave that because that is too, um, is still wet so I want, to, I'll come back and do that again in a minute but what I can do is start getting the light colours down onto this sort of tongue section here so a bit of the yellow on the edge and then some water Again, this is going over my masking fluid, so and I'll pick a little bit of pink up at this stage, and again, use some water just to fade that in. And I'll do a similar thing on the right hand side, back to the yellow, a bit of yellow. up some of the bright pink and just touch that in. So we're getting hints and suggestions. Of the brighter colour. And again just use a bit of water to fade that away because I've got stronger colour which needs to come in at the bottom. And then we need to be patient, let that dry before I go on to the next stage. Now that my initial uh, yellows and oranges in the centre of the flower have dried, I'm going to come back and I'm going to start putting the dark uh, petals around here. So I'm going back to my um, mauvey blues and again trying to make sure uh, that I put colour down and drop other colours into it. So this is my pinky mauve and again we can we can use a, this is a size four brush, I think, uh, and I can get a nice sharp edge with a good point coming round. 
and this is a colour which I can then drop other colours into. So I can come all the way down. I've used the, that size of brush for the smaller section and then I can move up to a slightly bigger brush and change my colour. I'm going to go for a, a little bit more of a blue tone in a blue mauve with a bigger brush in the middle here and then back to the smaller brush to push it to the edges. So it's swapping between the brush sizes and making sure that you're using a good pointed brush. And once this is down, again, I can then drop other colours that are a stronger mix so that I don't get cauliflowers everywhere. So a thicker pigment, slightly thicker pigment um, to add on or add into it rather. So I'm going to drop a bit of um, blue. This is my Windsor blue and I'll touch that along the inside. let the watercolour move it across and I've got a, a deeper purple mixed so I'll touch some of that in bring some of that along the edge here some blue at the same time so there's a lot of color variation it will make a much more interesting end result if you have some color variation within it now we go up to the top of this petal right to the edge Water to move it across. I'm going to put some of my bright pink in as well. Let it mix on the page. And again, back to some water. I'll just pull that down with a bit of water. But I'm being careful where I let the water touch because you will get cauliflowers, those little sort of squiggly shapes. Back to some blue, just touching a bit of blue in. So it's mini wet in wet, really. Uh, I think actually we need to, to introduce some really dark purple, or darker purple, towards the bottom here where it's still wet. So I'm just going to touch a little bit of that my indigo mix in just at the bottom and let it creep up on the wet paint and that part is really everything else is pretty much dry so that's the only bit left for my wet in wet so I'm going to let that I can't do any more to that because patches of it have started to dry and I don't want to uh, get that to have hard too many hard edges I've got a little bit of a hard edge there, but I'll sort that out later on. So having done that one, I'm going to do the same thing. I've got to wait for this to dry before I can go in and put the darks onto there. So while that's drying, I can move across and I can get my lightest tones on that little sort of centre kind of uh, tongue inside the flower. Uh, now that that sort of centre section has got uh, all the light washes on it, uh, the next bit that I need to move on to is this big petal at the bottom. So I thought it would be useful for me to try and demonstrate getting my basic washes down on that. At the moment, nothing has any detail, it's all wet and wet washes. So again, I'm going to go back to my sort of mauvey blue off of my large brush and wash that in. But this time I've got some a pale pink ready that I can bring in for the outside edge. So I'm still using my large brush to drop that in. I want that all to mix wet in wet. So let that touch around the edges to blend together. And again, moving quite quickly 
I'm going to bring in some more of the blue at the bottom here. And some more blue at the bottom there. And as with everything else I've done, go back to a small brush to take my washes to the very edges of the petal so they get a nice crisp edge. Don't worry if your colour is puddling at the moment, you will have time to mop that later. I can go all the way round, just making sure that what I've got on the brush is the appropriate colour for the section, so I've moved back to my pinky colour, taking that round the edge, and then I'll the same on this side as well. If it started to dry, mine's started to dry, it's so warm in here, but um, just work it round with the tip of the brush and that'll soften any hard line that's started to form. Just move it round and work it in a little bit. There we go. And again, I'm going to take a damp bit of my pale, pale blue up here move that a little bit further in on the edge some water on the brush and pull that back it might have dried a little bit too much but we'll sort that out later This will go much darker, so that edge that I've got there, I won't have to worry about because there'll be deeper purples on there. So the last thing I'm gonna do is to mop that up with this light color. Now it has started to dry already, but it's still a bit wet at the bottom, so I can introduce some of my deeper pit purples. So again, this is a slightly thicker mix of color, and I can begin to just drop some of that in into the sections that are still wet. Let that bleed in slightly. That's as far as I'm going to go because it's dried too much elsewhere. What I will do is I will let this now dry completely and then I can re-wet with clean water and that will allow me to drop some more colour in. So don't panic if it's dried, as mine has. I'm just moving that dark purple just onto the edge of the, doesn't matter that it's dried up there, but can have a little dark of it coming around the outside. So I can do that even onto dry paint. edge formed in the petal here so I can drop some more colour in in this section. And while that is still wet on the lower bit I'm going to go and drop in my indigo as well, my indigo mix, which is nice and dark because this bit is still wet so I'll get some softer colour. I'm taking my brushwork down now in the direction that the petal is falling, coming down this way. But that's quite a thick mix of colour so that it doesn't run too far. It's a much thicker consistency. Right, that's about as far as I can go and all I'm going to do is just where the colour has accumulated too much, again just a damp brush and I can mop my excess colour. And I will now have to be patient and wait for this to dry before I can come up, re-wet, to drop 
some stronger colour into this top section. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I could go in and put the darks into these pieces at the top here. So I'll just demonstrate on this uh, right hand side. I've got some very dark mix here. Again, this is my indigo and permanent rose. And I can begin to put that in this again with my size four brush so it's got a good point and just before so it's not one solid color there's a little bit of a hint of yellow tone coming through so I'm going to get a bit of my gamboge I'm just going to paint that on and let the color run together and leave that bit but it emerges again round here and it comes down into the bottom part of this petal so I can bring that around and into here and just use a little bit of water on my brush to soften it in Sure it looks like it's joined. The next piece is underneath here so I'll use my small brush to cut in close to the underside of the petal so that I get a sharp edge follow it round. And you can't really distinguish so I can let those two colours run together keep going back to load my brush because I don't want to run out of colour. And I'm actually going to pick up, I've got some darker, this has got a lot more indigo in it, so I'm going to let that come down from the top and follow the arc of the petal round. back to my deeper purple colour and mix that in. We'll see when this dries if this is anywhere near dark enough or if I will need to go back in on top with some more colour. go back in and just just feed in some more of my really strong indigo indigo mix in at the top and towards the back so I want to get that dark velvety look I need to do that with this petal I need to do it with that petal there and I also need to do it with this one here what I'm going to do now is just try and bring in some of the darker tones on this lower uh, petal to show you and if I can demonstrate that then you'll start to get the hang of how to bring in some darker tones on the other petals. So I'm going to concentrate on this lower one. Right, so uh, coming down from the sort of mouth of the tongue if you like, there are these uh, stronger pinks. So I've got all my colours mixed in advance and I'm going to come down with a small brush, this is my size 2, and begin with this sort of shocking pink colour. I have done little bits of um, masking fluid, so I'm painting these colours down and the masking fluid will prevent it from going where I don't want it to. So I'll begin with the pink. I'm only going to do a section at a time because I want to introduce other colours. So I'll start with the pink and then move into a mauve tone and introduce some mauve so that we start moving down into the main section. And back to the pink over here. Then if I 
quickly go up to a bigger brush. I can bring some more of my pink through. Wash it in to join the other darker patch. Clean the brush off and then with just some light blue, run some pale blue to the edge along with a bit of water. And I'm going to take that into the section that we did done before. And I can do a similar thing. This time I'm going to go in with my mauve and bring tons of mauve down. I'm going to be a bit quicker this time. Mauve and pick up a little bit of blue at the same time. Drop some of that in. Larger brush, pick up some stronger purple and pull that in. And if I'm working quick enough, my colours will run together. That's the idea. And I can take the colour over the dark bit so I don't get a hard edge. So I'll do the same thing on the other side. Go to my purple with a small brush, pick up some purple and pull it down and then I'll go into pink as I come around the corner, introduce some pink. Bigger brush and let that pink run across section. Back to my purple colour. Let the colours run together. Uh, some blue just at the bottom. So all the time I'm varying the shades while it's wet and wet letting it run together back up to some pink and then my, my purple on the edge. Just a bit of clean water to fade the colour out. While it's still wet, if there's areas where I want it to be a lot darker, so I've got my sort of indigo and I can come in with that strong indigo on the brush. drop some of that in, pull it down in streaks, fanning them out so that they go in the direction that I want the flower to flow. And it's a little damp on the other side, I can still do a little bit of that on this side as well. quite so much. There is a light section through the middle here. I'll lift that off afterwards. I'm not worrying about avoiding that. And now that I've done that section, I'm actually going to come back down to this lower bit and go in even darker with a second layer for the curve of the petal. this bit is on to dry so with water on my brush I can then pull some fine bits out and get a bit more shape to get washed in. I've also got some dark purple which I'll put into. Just take my lines round to give a bit of form and a bit of water to soften some edges. 
get very dark on the edge of the petal here. And before it has a chance to form a colour flower, mop up the excess colour that's accumulating at the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll let that dry and then see if there's any areas, which there will be at the top here, where I need to go back in and dark. Now that I've finished uh, putting my layers of colour on the main petals, I need to go back into the centre of the flower and push that into the shadows. So that's the original set of wet washes that I put down, but they need to go darker. Now that everything else has had its uh, layers on, that sort of centre bit needs to go dark. So what I've done is to take the yellow, my gamboge, the pink, which was the uh, permanent rose, to make the orange, and then opposite sort of orange and yellow on the colour wheel is mauve. So I've taken one of my mauves, added it to that to mute the colour down. And I'm going to try working with that to tone down this sort of inside of the flower. Actually, I think I'll move to a smaller brush um, to do this bit uh, and try and push this back. If it's not dark enough, I can just add a deeper mauve to the colour. So I'm going to wash that on, move it around with a bit of water and I'm hoping that that's going to push that sort of inside of the flower away. I need to do that on this petal as well. We'll see how that dries and then I can make a decision whether to go darker still. Just make sure I've come all the way down. Right into that part there. And actually I can go under here too. Okay. Now while that's a little bit wet, I think what I'll do is I'll take some uh, magenta and run a little bit of that over the top. So there are sort of purpley tones inside. So if I put some pink down first, I can then run some blue on top of that. And I'll get that stripe of colour on the inside a bit deeper. see what we get. some burnt sienna and I'm going to bring some burnt sienna in as well and drop that in. It's definite hints as the petal curls over. And I can tone down that centre with the burnt sienna, run that all the way down. How that looks because I don't want it to go muddy. I've got dark pieces here to do but until that's all dry I don't want to work onto that bit. So what I'm going to do is come and put some uh, orange tones, orange ye yellows, using that burnt sienna in fact and pull that in. I'll move down to a tiny brush I think a size two for this and get some of that 
really fine. I might put some gamboge in with my burnt sienna, I think, to make it a little bit brighter. And with the tip of a size two brush, pull that in to give the hairy look. stronger. Now what else do we need to do? Get a little bit of shape in this central section so there's some really strong pinks on the, the edges with my tiny fine brush. Not a solid line but there's some little hints of edging, darker edging. So I can use the tip of the brush to do that. And I think I want to go with some slightly mauve tone, a bit darker on the bottom. I'm going to put a little line of dark and then use clean water, pull it round because I want that shape to really look rounded. stronger pink I'm going to do the same thing on this side and make this look a little bit more rounded my pink with a, just the tiniest bit of blue in it but this time from the top so slightly stronger at the top and then with some water pull it round in a bit darker I think but I'm going to do the side bits first so wait for it all to totally dry before you go in with the side sections um, but I'll do that the other thing I also need to do is I've taken all the masking fluid off so it's all bright white at the moment and that needs to be tinted to make it look as though it goes into the throat of the flower so again with my burnt sienna with a tiny bit of mauve added to it just to mute it down um, I'm going to go into the throat of the flower. In fact, a little bit more. See, I think make it slightly darker. And I'm going to go into the throat of the flower here with a little patch of dark and then water. Pull it away with some water to try and give the impression of some shadow. I'll do the same on this side as well. A little bit more. But I'll touch a bit of burnt sienna in there and then some water to fade that through. So we're really kind of on the home stretch with this. We need to go through, I've got some pale mauves to put down on some of these white stripes and I've got some pale blues 
and um, dark purples to put on some of these stripes as well. So we're on the home stretch, uh, just got a few touches to do and then look at the step. Now that I have finished uh, darkening down this inner section, um, what I've also done is I've taken a little bit of sepia and uh, where the patterning of these um, petals as they go into the throat, uh, go into the shade, they get very dark. So all around here and all around there, where they've gone into the shadows, I've used a little bit of sepia on a fine brush and painted that texture in. I've also used a bit of very diluted grey, uh, blue to uh, pull some shadow up underneath that sort of yellow section. So the only thing left to do now is get some colour onto the stalk. I'm sticking with the same blue, blues that I've been using, so I've been using the Windsor Blue, um, and this is Windsor Blue with a little bit of gamboge, uh, so it's a lot more blue than and a tiny bit of gamboge, and I'm just going to put a pale wash down over the stalk, so it's quite a grey, uh, quite a sort of a cool green and just use some water to fade it off at the end and then with a damp brush, just a damp brush, run that down one side and lift back a little bit of the colour, do it a couple of times so that there's more diluted lifted off colour on one side so it's quite pale and then on the other side I'm just going to up the strength of that colour a little bit so add a bit more blue a little bit more yellow and then while it's hopefully still wet touch that in down the right hand side and just tip it slightly see if it will run across if it's drying it's very warm in here it's drying a bit quick so what I'll do is take a small brush with some water on it and just use that to tease it across. Just what we want to do is grade that a little bit so that it pushes away across and I just want it to tail out at the end. And then you can keep touching in colour on the right hand side so that it bleeds across. If I add a little bit more dark to that, I'll just put, this has got a touch of my indigo mix in it, and I'm just going to touch that down the side with the tip of the small brush, and hopefully where it's wet it'll just keep moving across, and I'll just keep dropping in colour until you're happy, and I'm going to use a damp brush again just to soften the edge, wiping it off on kitchen paper all the time so that I don't get a harsh, harsh line. So the brush is just damp, it's not wet and each time I'm drying it on the kitchen paper so that I get just a little sense of uh, light moving around. I've got a tiny gap at the top there which I don't want. And I have to sit here and be patient and just keep pulling the colour back with my damp brush, running it backwards and forwards until I'm happy. If you want to, you could put a bud in, that might be quite nice, a bud um, and a bit of the leaf coming through uh, to add to your composition. But basically, we're done. <laughs>